We're going to do a short video on how to set up the bumper smith nitrogen welding system. Starting right now, I'm going to show you that the tank, the nitrogen tank, you need to buy your four footer to put in these systems, which most rental gas will reach your four footer. This is a three footer. You load this here bottle from the left side. Push it all the way through for the stop. Once you get it to the position you want it in, I'm going to turn this where you can see what I'm doing. When you get it in the position that you can hook up your gauge, turn the bottle to the setting where your gauge will be to where you can read it before you open the bumper smith up. Normally, when I set my pressure on these gauges, I set it at about 40 pounds at this level here. Up on the machine, it'll be on 3 pounds. Tighten it up and turn it on. Then you're ready to go ahead and open up your bumper smith for your use. In this case, we're going to simply show you the setup in this video. You open the bumper smith up. Take your arms, which you can use for two positions for bumpers, and put them back in place. If you want them sticking up for the fact that you've got two pads that go on the arm. Once you have that set up, there's two pedestals that mount your weld. You put it up where you think you might be using for any particular bumper, whether you're working on the table, working on the arms, or standing a bumper up. You've got two saddles to put your bumper into for the simple reason that you may want to be over here working one minute and it may be better to put it over here the next. Basically, you can put it in four different places. We may, as this machine sails, add two back here for the simple reason that there is time before you need to weld at another place. At this point, go ahead and remove your work hose. This is the hose that you'll do all your grinding with and everything that you need to do for sanding and grinding off of the bumper. Remove the welder. It has approximately about 10 or 12 foot. Turn around and set it down in one of your sides where you can work with arm length of everywhere you're working from the front of the machine. At this point, you want to reach and get your air and bring it over the back if you're going to be working on this side of the machine. Left. Have your left tool where you can do the same thing. to your machine. Your air is going to be hooked up right here. You got air in, you got air out. Out, out goes to your sanders and your grinders. You have a switch on the far left that has to do with turning the welder on and off right there. You have a control which sets the temperature. Most times when you're doing any welding at all with the bumper smith, you're going to be at medium range. That's usually running about 500 to 550 in the wattage. For basically, you're having to set the temperature to where the welder itself will get to a certain temperature and the temperature control will bring it back and just hold it at that particular temperature. At this point, your switch that you're using from air over to nitrogen is set on air. You'll feel a flow there. That's the one thing you want to check. At that point, look and see if your gauge is a reading approximately three pounds. Three pounds is a normal operating range unless you have the potential for what we call blowout. And blowout is when the air is too forceful against the well and you would want to pull out on your switch and turn it down to a pound and a half to two pounds. Ever what works best for you. Actually, you're doing all your welding over on the nitrogen side. 
And since you're doing it on the nitrogen side, we always just preset this gauge to three pounds, leave it, and usually use this one to go up and down as far as pressure. Sometimes you weigh better on a real thin piece of plastic at about a pound to a pound and a half. And on a thicker piece, you can set it at the three pound. The company that makes this welder actually recommends a three pound operating range. I found in 15 years of doing bumpers, there was many a time that I had to do it at a pound to a pound and a half. But I always would go back to the air setting and that was when I used my heat up and my cool down. This welder is set up with a set of operating directions that tells you the complete setup of going into getting ready to do the whale and when you finish the whale of going back to closing up completely and just doing your sanding and your priming and what have you. Another thing that this unit has is that this small welder, which is the old spaghetti welder we call it, which uses the old spaghetti rod, which is made only for urethane. That's all you can use it for, and there's still a few bumpers out there that uses that particular type of uh, material. It comes with one of them. You can unplug, if you're going to use this, unplug the regular air welder, and you can plug this welder in on that same plug, turn this control down to the low side of the range, usually from off up to where it says temperature control will pretty well cover that 80 watts. And when it gets hot, then you normally, you know, you do your well. It's got a place to set it up as because it's got a little notch right there. Uh, when we do a schooling on this particular or another video pertaining to this particular welder, we'll do a small course on how this welder is used and the different things that you can do that makes the well easy. But this machine was mainly designed and built for the use of nitrogen, which is our shielding gas to make a well flow out real easy. And like I said, it's made where you can trick it on and off here. This basically is how the bumper smith is set up. These arms here are simply where you can get yourself a bumper and you can turn it upside down or you can slide them a little bit forward and you can turn it over to where the bumper is looking up at you. That gives you two positions that makes it real easy for you to actually do a weight because it's hard to do a well to any bumper or anything working off of an old fender stand. The other thing is, this particular table is 84 inches long. You can set the biggest bumper there is, which is the excursion or the sequoia foyo, on this table. And there's a lot of repairs where you need to set a bumper on and you take a clamp and you clamp that edge of that bumper from the inside to the table and you can even clamp it, if you're working on this side, you can clamp it on the inside lip. Gives you the advantage of being able to pull a bumper any way you want to pull it. The other thing that this machine has, if you need it to work on the very inside of a bumper on the end, you can take this arm right here out, put it in on this side, reach up here and take a clamp and hold your bumper up and clamp it to the lower portion of the bumper on the inside. And then that bumper will be set in here to where you can do any kind of an inside weld or repair to the inside of it. It just makes it a lot easier if you've got to do an inside weld. And believe you me, after years and years of doing recycled bumpers, I found that there was a lot of positions that I needed to put the bumper in to do different repairs. Now, basically, that is the complete setup of this unit other than adjusting at different times your regulators. Your regulators are simple. You can pull out on just a little bit and turn them to the desired pressure that you want. These welders are set up before they are operating at about three pounds of pressure for any weld there is. Uh, and the gauge is only 
doing body work in my 15 years of doing recycle bumpers, we have actually put together a workstation where a body man can do the work and be more encouraged to do the work. Most machines are designed to where it's a difficult situation and you've got to drag out everything in the shop to be able to perform the work. And so what we've tried to do is to make it easy on the body man. And I've found that if he don't have to drag out everything out of his tutor box and hunt up everything in the shop, he's more apt to do a repair. So in closing, that's basically what I've got to say about the setup of this system. And this hole becomes, like I said, a very good work piece to have where the other machines don't have that, and you would have to add it. Most body men working in a stall only have one hole to operate off of, and when they're operating something like this, if they don't have an extra one to do the grinding or their sanding and what have you on the bumper, then they would be forced to have to undo this. And undoing it, you would be creating a situation where you could burn your welder up because this welder, it heats up on the air side, cools down on the air side. You have to let this hole, after you turn the welder off, you have to let this hole continue hooked up and have it on the air side for a cool down period of five to seven minutes. Usually about five minutes, he's cool enough to uh, be able to completely put the machine up and close the shop on the use of your machine. This has been a, a, the best idea I've seen on the market out of the three welders that's out there. My name is David Smith. I appreciate you looking at the bumpers.